welcome to Area of a Triangle, the Sine Method. Uh, just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes chatter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so let's start with the formula. Uh, the area of a triangle can be given as a half AB sine C. Now for this to work, you must have the triangle in the format that you can see here, where little a is opposite uh, the angle big A, little b is opposite the angle big B, little c is opposite the uh, angle big C. Um, and for this one to work, uh, there are other versions of this formula uh, where we again swap A with B or B with C and so on. Uh, but the one thing that we need to make sure is that the angle that we are uh, that we know or want to find in this case C that we have the two sides either side of that we have A and we have B in order to use the sine rule um, to find the area of a triangle it needs to have this formation of known variables okay so let's try this out with the example we can see here we have a side of 4 centimetres, a side of 6 centimetres and an angle of 40 degrees. Now the formula that we're going to use all the way through here is that the area is equal to a half a b sine c. But what we just need to be careful of here, all we need to make sure is that the angle that we know is the angle which we're going to label as C. From now on we can label everything else based on that. So the, uh, the side opposite it will be little c and the other two angles we don't actually have any information about them so we can label them in either order. And so we've got here that little a is four centimeters and little b is six centimeters. And all we now need to do is substitute into this expression. So we've got a half and this is all multiplication, so it's a half times a, which is 4, times b, which is 6, times sine, and the angle that we have been given. So in this case, 40 degrees. And all we need to do is pull up a calculator and type those values in. So we have half times 4 times 6 times sine. 40 and we have an answer of 7.71 and that is an area so given that the lengths are in centimeters well the area is going to be centimeters squared so the area of that triangle is 7.71 centimeters squared let's try it with this one so we've got um, 9 centimetres, 12 centimetres is two of our sides. We have 34 degrees and 107 degrees. Now, in order to use the sine rule again, we are thinking about a half A, B, sine C. And we need to be able, in this case, to make sure that we have two sides, A and B. Well, the two sides that we know are here and here. And so, if we call this side little A, well, that would make this angle big A. If we call this side little b, it would make this angle big B. And so this side must be little c. And therefore the angle 34 degrees is the one that we're really interested in. In this case, we've been given the extra information here that angle B is 107 degrees, but it actually has no impact on our working out here. The only values we need are little a, little b and capital C. And so all we're going to do is again just put those values in. So it's a half times 9 times 12 times sine 34 and again grab the calculator type those values in and let's see what we get. So half times 9 times 12 times sine 34 close the bracket equals 30.20 And that is going to be, again, centimetres squared. So for the next set of examples, we've actually been told what the area is and we're trying to calculate one of the missing sides. Now, first of all, we just need to check whether or not we can use the method. We should always have two sides and the angle in between. Well, in this case, that's exactly what we've got. And so 
the formula means that this must be what we are going to call capital C, making this small c, capital A, small a, capital B, small b. And the formula tells us that area equals a half a b sine c. And so we're going to fill in everything that we know in this case. In this case, we know the area. We know the area is 15.85. And that is equal to a half times, in this case, 6 times x times sine 49. And so, in this case, it is slightly different. We're trying to find out what this value x is. So how are we going to do that? Well, the easiest way is we're just going to divide both sides by a half times 6 times 49. And so x on its own is going to be the area, 15.85, divided by a half times 6 times sine 49. And that, in our calculator, is going to give us the answer straight out. So let's do that. 15.85 all over a half times 6 times sine 49. And that gives us an answer of 7.000. So we have 7.00 centimetres. That length must be 7 centimetres long. Let's try it again for this one. Again, we're trying to find a missing side. We just need to check, do we have the right information? Or well, we have a side, another side, and the angle in between them. We've got everything that we require. And so in this case, we've got that the area, 8.45, must be equal to a half times A. Well, we haven't labeled it, so let's just do that. Little c, capital A, little a, capital B, little b, and so A is x, B is 5, and we've got sine 75. Again, if I want to get x all on its own, well that's going to be a case of dividing by a half times 5 times sine 75. So I've got 8.45 all over a half times 5 times sine 75. And let's pop all of that into our calculator and see what answer we get. So we've got 8.45 being divided by a half, let's call that 0 0.5, times 5 times sine 75. Close your bracket and you get an answer of 3.4992. Let's call that 3.5. And so that other side must be 3.5 centimetres. And then in our final set of examples, we're looking at trying to find a missing angle if we know what the triangle, uh, what the area of the triangle is. And so again, we just need to check, do we have the correct information required in order to use the formula? Well, we have a side, we have another side, and the angle in between it. That means we've got everything that we require. All we need to remember here is that with the sign rule, the angle that we know, or in this case want to know, we must call capital C. So that makes it little c, and then capital A, little a, capital B, little b. And so all we need to do is use our formula once again. So the area is 8.86, and we know that that is equal to a half times a, in this case 6, times b, which is 3, times sine of a value. Well, in this case, it's sine x. So in this case, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to isolate sine x. We're going to get sine x on its own. And the way to do that would be to divide by everything here. So I've got 8.86 over a half times 6 times 3 and then if we want to get x on its own this is just like everything within trigonometry if you need to isolate the angle 
then we're going to need to use the inverse of our function. So we're going to need to use sine inverse or sine to the minus 1 of everything that we have written here, 8.86 over a half times 6 times 3. And again, all we need then is for our calculator, shift sign of our fraction 8.86 over a half times 6 times 3. I'll we'll just move out of the bracket. There we go. Equals. And that has come out at 79.88 degrees. And so X is 79.88 degrees. Very, very close to exactly 80 degrees. Okay, now our last example, we have um, a triangle that has an angle of X degrees, an angle of 77 degrees, a side of 5 centimetres and a side of 9 centimetres with an area of 22.38 centimetres squared. Now, if we think about our formula, what we've been looking for throughout every other question is an angle, uh, sorry, a side and another side and the angle in between. Now, unfortunately, in this question, the angle that's in between the two sides that we know is not labelled. But that does not mean it's not important. Let's just think about what it means. This angle must be C. The side must be little c. The other two angles would be A with little a and capital B with little b. Let's see if we can get to an answer for x using this information. So the area is 22.38 and we know that that must equal a half times a which in this case is 9 times b which is 5 times sine of an angle well we're just going to call it sine c here because we don't have any labels on it if i want to get sine c on its own well i will have to divide by everything that's at the front here so sine c would be 22.38 over a half times 9 times 5 and therefore c on its own would be sine inverse whenever you're trying to find an angle you have to use the inverse function and so it's just going to be over everything that we've got here and we're just going to use our calculator and type that in so we're going to have shift sine of 22.38 all over a half times nine times five and that equals 84.08 so c will be 84.08 degrees now does that help well let's have a look if this angle here is 84.08 how can i find the angle that we've actually been asked for, x. Well now, just comes down to the fact that the angles in a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So all I want to do here is 84.08 plus 77 and have all of that taken away from 180. So 180, take away those two values, will give me my answer. So let's add 77 add 180 take away my answer well that is 18.92 and so the angle we were actually looking for would be 18.92 degrees and finally we come to the exam question and this came from the edexcel paper in november 2018 and it was the higher paper two so that is a calculator question thankfully um, and the diagram shows a circle and an equilateral triangle one side of the equilateral triangle is a diameter of the circle. The circle has a circumference of 44 centimetres. Work out the area of the triangle. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. Now, this question does not seem, uh, seem at the moment to uh, really represent what we've looked at so far. But the key is, it says area of the triangle. So in some way, we must be able to use a half AB sine C within this question. 
And so what we need to just think about is everything that we can work out from the information we're given to begin with. And the first thing is I would like to go to circumference of 44 centimetres. Well, the circumference of a circle is pi times diameter. And so if I can uh, use that formula, I can work out the diameter as that is one of the lengths in my triangle. And so if I want to get the circumference, well, we know that's 44 and we know that that is pi times the diameter. How do I get the diameter on its own? Well, the diameter, we're just going to need to divide by pi. And so it's 44 over pi. And that's exactly how I'm going to leave it at the moment because we've got a calculator at hand. It's much easier for us to type in 44 over pi than it is the actual really long decimal version that we're going to get. So straight away, I now know that that length is 44 over pi. There is other information which is important. It is an equilateral triangle. If it's equilateral, well, that means that all of the sides are the same. And so this length must also be 44 over pi. And then all we need in order to use the area of a triangle formula would be this angle. Now we haven't been told what the angle is, but we know it is an equilateral triangle. The key there, the angles are always all the same. They are all 60 degrees. And so in fact, we've now got everything we require to use the formula. This is our angle capital C. This is side little c. Angle capital A, side small a. Angle capital B, side small b. And so the area would have to be a half times a, which is 44 over pi, times b, which is 44 over pi, times sine 60. And if you type all of that into your calculator, we have a half times 44 over pi times 44 over pi times sine 60 and we get an answer 84 point nine three eight eight let's have a look at what the answer was supposed to be three significant figures so let's have a look at this eighty four point nine what are our units in this question well the circumference was in centimeters and therefore the area needs to be with centimeters but centimeters squared and we're all done eighty four point nine centimeters squared